dearest Louise, friends, colleagues, and, as I'm sure Carter would have said, comrades of Car- Professor Carter Asmon. I'm so sorry that I can't be with you in person this evening, and I'm very grateful to Amnesty International for helping me make this video instead. In 1989, Carter Asmel delivered the D.N. Pritt Memorial Lecture to the Haldane Society of Socialist Lawyers at the London School of Economics. He took as his theme, If Law is the Enemy, and he talked about the series of repressive uh, legislation and practices that had been adopted in order to combat terrorism in Northern Ireland. His theme was that Repression is not the answer to politically inspired violence. He said that the partition of of Ireland was wrong and that the people of Ireland have the right to self-determination. He was, of course, drawing on his own South African experience. The audience was mainly made up of British lawyers and Carter berated them for knowing more about human rights abuses in South Africa than they did in relation to Northern Ireland on their own doorstep. He called on them to do more to combat human rights abuses and listening to him were a small group of non-lawyers, including myself. We went up to him after his lecture and we asked him, did he think there was scope for what we called a voluntary organisation, these days you'd call it an NGO, uh, based in London, and concentrating in particular on the human rights dimension of the conflict in Northern Ireland, because we did not want to get drawn into any kind of sectarian debate, uh, and we certainly were not um, wanting to take a position about the constitutional position in Northern Ireland. Carter was extremely encouraging, uh, and he asked us to meet him the next day, gave us a lot of his time and suggested that we speak to the Committee on the Administration of Justice, the biggest human rights group in Belfast at the time. They were also very supportive and out of that conversation arose my organisation, British Irish Rights Watch, of which I have the honour to be the director. And Carter was one of our first sponsors and I'm very proud to say because Carter told me so that he was proud to be one of our sponsors. A couple of years after that, just before the historic first free elections in South Africa, my husband Martin and I went to visit Carter and Louise in Cape Town. Uh, It was a wonderful, wonderful introduction to the new South Africa. Um, We got the greatest possible education from perhaps the greatest didact in the world, Carter himself. It's no wonder that he became Minister of Education, although, like many of the lawyers in the first Mandela administration, he told me he really wanted to be the Attorney General. He wasn't the sort of person to take his responsibilities as a sponsor of British Irish Rights Watch lightly. Whenever he came to London, I would be summoned to a very smoky until Louise put her foot down, and exacting briefing on what was going on in Northern Ireland. Whilst tirelessly working to combat apartheid, Carter never forgot what was going on on his own doorstep. He was a founder member, along with later President of Ireland, Mary Robinson, of the Irish Council for Civil Liberties. In 1984, he chaired an international lawyers' commission into what became known as Shoot to Kill in Northern Ireland. And with Richard Harvey, he produced a report which, I'm sorry to say, we still refer to on a regular basis in my office. In 1992, he came to London, where he chaired several sessions at the Northern Ireland Human Rights Assembly, the first ever big conference to look at the human rights dimension of the conflict in Northern Ireland. And in 2007, he came back to London to give us the benefit of his experience of constructing a Bill of Rights in South Africa. Unfortunately, in Northern Ireland, we're still waiting for hours. Those are just some of the examples of the kind of things that 
Carter did to contribute towards the development of human rights in Ireland. And of course, we mustn't forget all the students that he trained at Trinity College Dublin, who then took the flame of human rights across the world. I remember an occasion when I found myself at Canary Wharf in 2001. Carter had persuaded Nelson Mandela to launch the report of the World Commission on Dams, an issue which was very much dear to Carter's heart, having been Minister for Water Affairs. I found myself bumping into people all the time who had no connection with dams, just as I had no connection with dams. And we kept saying the same thing to each other. I'm only here because of Carter. I didn't get to speak to Carter until lunchtime, when he was in a, a little partitioned area with the members of the Dam Commission having lunch. He immediately and imperiously invited me to join him, much to the consternation of the caterers because he'd also invited a number of other gate crashers whom they were not expecting. To my amazement, I found myself sitting next to Prince William of Orange, Rather an unusual situation for somebody working on Northern Ireland to find themselves in, and the sort of occasion that only Carter could generate. On another occasion, this time when Carter wasn't present, I found myself having dinner with Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I told him about Carter's role in the origins of British Irish Rights Watch. Ah, said Desmond Tutu, laughing, I might have guessed that Carter would have been at the bottom of it because he's usually at the bottom of everything. He said it with such a huge smile on his face that there was no sting in it at all and it was a tribute to the fact that Carter always was at the heart of everything. My fondest memories of Carter are in fact my last ones. Martin and I were invited to go and celebrate his 75th birthday which unfortunately the celebrations are rather delayed because, he, because of his battle with cancer. We went in some trepidation because we felt we might never see him again and in fact we were right. However, we found Carter in absolutely fine fettle and as far as I was concerned, immediately demanding a briefing on Northern Ireland. I shall miss Carter very much. I didn't see him very often, but in a sense, he was always there. He always remembered our work, and he always remembered what we'd been doing. I think there are many people all over the world who would say exactly the same thing. That was Carter's special ability, to encourage, to support, and to befriend. Viva Carter! We will miss him. <laughs>